In this video, guys, I'm going to show you how I was able to wholesale a subject to property listed with an agent. Yes, listed with an agent on market for sale for everyone to see. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty and the numbers behind how this transaction went down, if you don't know what subject to is, subject to is the art of buying a property with little to no cash out of pocket by taking over the existing loan that is in place with the current seller. We're going to get into the details in the video, but before we do, if you guys find any value in this, these type of videos, please like, subscribe, comment below what your favorite part of the video was, and let me know if you guys want to see more of these videos because I wouldn't mind sharing my success. So let's get into the video and show you how exactly we were able to get the job done. Real quick, I'd love to hear Sean afterwards. Uh, my name is Luciano. I have been investing for about a little under three years. I've done my fair share of wholesale deals, cash, and um, creative as well. I'm at the stage where I'm beginning to buy properties, actually take them down rather than wholesaling them all the time, but it still works to wholesale creative deals. And that's exactly what we did with this one. And, um, all thanks to Monte bringing it over. So I appreciate it. And, uh, Sean, tell us about it. Uh, yeah, cool. So, I mean, I've just been in sub two since, uh, like November of last year. So not even quite a year, uh, oh, wow. joined Luciano's team pretty quick after joining sub two, you know, he found me in one of the uh, nightly dials, um, just where people go to be action takers and hop on the phone. I didn't know anything about what I was doing or who I was calling, but it was just about taking the action and, you know, looking back over like, what is it? 10 months or so now, um, it was one of the best decisions I ever did. Um, uh, joining and joining the team and learning so much from Luciano really just catapulted, uh, the trajectory of my knowledge base and how to get deals done and now having a stack of HUDs behind me is just something that's like pretty crazy to think about. Um, so it, it's really, it's really cool to be able to um, have these conversations with, with the agents, not only the agents, but also brokers and lawyers and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really, it's really cool to see how far I've come in such a short amount of time. Yeah. And do you think that's because you teamed up with someone who was already doing it? A thousand percent. You know what I mean? Like it, it really is just, you know, trying to do something by yourself like this, you know, I feel like I would have just been spinning wheels. Yeah. Um, you know, that the learning curve by yourself versus with the team um, is totally different. I consider my uh, success more like a rocket ship. Right. It just was, you know, it had its ups and downs of like the beginning first couple months, but I think I got my first deal within the second month. And that nice. was a absolutely crazy deal that maybe we'll break down another time, but it had everything <laughs> from a lease back, um, <laughs> like just all sorts of crazy things that went into this one. Um, and yeah, it was just really cool, but it was a great learning experience. Right. So, I mean, if you can get the hard ones out of the way first, then yeah. the other ones just seem to be cake. Right. Yeah. And then you're building that confidence, um, uh, to be able to move forward that uh, you already had these conversations before, you know, how to move forward. Um, and yeah, it's just really cool. I, I'd say if you're thinking about joining a team and you're just getting started, get on a team, find somebody else who has, um, already has a track record of doing stuff and learn from them. You know, that's the best way, you know, like if it was a, a different career, it's like, Hey, you know, you might want to go, if you could, you know, work for free, but alongside pace, you know, for a year, would you do that? Or would you go get like a $60,000 a year job? Dude, people and, would pay to do that. Exactly. People would pay to do that. Exactly. Yeah. So get around people that are, that are doing stuff to learn, and ask questions and bounce ideas off of, um, because that's the biggest thing, because, you know, when you win the team wins, right. So, and, and vice versa. So glad that you said that. In fact, can you believe that it took me two years to get my first wholesale deal? 
That was because I had analysis paralysis as well as get rich quick schemes available. Anything that I could find that will get me rich quick, I tried. And it wasn't until I JV'd with a wholesaler for me to start being consistent and closing deals. And so comes to this property, um, it was actually a follow-up. I was like, hey, haven't spoke to you in a couple of months. Wanted to see if you have anything we could look at. He goes, well, I got this property, but um, they need to get what they're asking for because they owe almost, you know, all of it. <laughs> they wouldn't be walking away with anything. And I go, do you think they'd be open to us taking over their payments? They were like, they might send me the information. I'm like, okay, sweet. And then like later that day, he goes, so what's the next step? What? Next step, I don't know. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, let me just send it over to you guys, see what you guys need for me to get this information over to you and see how we can move forward. And so I'm like, I didn't know the next step because I haven't gotten that far. Everybody will say no, and give me a lot of objections and still say no. And I'm still on the follow up game when it comes to the other creative offers that I've made. So this was the first one. That, that came through. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. So he closed you, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like he, he, I mean, this must have been a pain for the Asian, right? And so we can talk about that very briefly how like yeah. low equity deals become a pain in the butt to agents. It's yeah. something that it's hard to move on the traditional market. There's no equity. So the seller would have to do what? Come out of pocket yep. to sell their property because put it oh, easy as $300,000 purchase price. Let's call it 290 loan, 10 grand of equity. By the time you factor in commissions, mm -hmm. that's 15, you know, minus like 15K, minus closing costs, you know, seller, buyer credits, all that stuff. Yeah. Selling the seller has to get a check. So it, it, the agent hearing that was probably like, holy crap, like this is <laughs> close on this. I, at least that's my thought. I'm not an agent, but if I was, I'd be a very open minded agent. I'd be pitching it all because, <laughs> you know, cash doesn't fit everybody. Traditional right. doesn't necessarily fit everybody. There are situations where creative finance and it's just it. And there are situations that is just isn't. So it's just, mm -hmm. you have to assess it and put whatever entry, I like to say entry strategy to the deal that will solve the seller's problem, problem, problem. Right. And so um, let's, let's put the numbers down on this deal. We just talked about it a minute ago, but let's, we're going to call it Carrara. I have a little pad here. I'm going to share a screen here in a minute. Yeah. So I'd love to kind of give a visual cue. Sean, would you like to add anything? I, would, I think you have more to say once we break down the deal. I think. Yeah, you, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if you guys actually brought up the fact that this property needed work. Like it had oh, foundation yeah. issues. So like it wasn't like turnkey ready along with the arrears. It was like, this has foundation issues. This is going to need some work to be able to get things going because the basement yeah. had a leak you know it had like all these other things going on with it too so like the agent on this one was a rock star like he was yeah. very transparent and, you know when, when coming into it i had that conversation like hey this is actually going to be a tough one um you know like i'm not gonna I never, I never say never but i'm there might be a chance that we're not going to be the buyers on this one so i think we could do is market this out for you Mm -hmm. um in this way that we think that another person might be interested and you know uh long story short you know he ended up having a homestead buyer come to him shortly after we locked this one up and that's how we found the buyer for this um but yeah there was a lot more to that deal a lot of other fires and a lot of other obstacles that we had to overcome yeah to, to make this happen so Alrighty, so now that we have the four pillars of this lead which is the condition need some work has some foundation issues motivation they are behind on their payments and they owe close to what they're asking for so the longer it takes for them to sell which is the price the more opportunity that the bank can foreclose on them and that also runs into timeline they need to sell asap because they cannot afford to one pay the mortgage and two update the property in order to get it to a move-in ready type of condition so now that we have the four pillars, we send it over to Luciano and Sholin for the next steps. Yeah, you know, it was just reaching out to the agent, you know, whenever they submit something through our JV pipeline, there's a, there's 
um, some information. So any relevant information that we have about it, we'll, we'll be able to see, right? So I just did a quick glance, you know, and kind of see where they were at in the conversation. That way I can, I can pick up the phone and just like, Hey agent, you know, this is Sean, you know, I work with Monte on, on some creative deals. And, you know, I said, you guys were kind of having a conversation about the property on one, two, three main street or Carrera. And so just kind of catch me up to speed on where you guys left off. Um, and then it's easy to like, well, Monte was mentioning something like this, but he didn't get too much detail. I was like, okay, perfect. Awesome. And then I just able to kind of go in there and like, gather a little bit more information as far as like getting like an actual um, a recent loan balance to run the numbers and see if this is something that would be a good fit for both of us. Um, and then really just, uh, yeah, just verifying the information that we send over. Right. So I'm still on like a discovery call um, is the way that I kind of think about it and, you know, just build a relationship with the agent, kind of let them know what, what we're thinking. Yeah. Um, this one was a little bit more, um, uh, like the, it was distressed, you know, like they haven't been paying for a while. There is damage that they were open about. There was, it's been on the market for quite some time. I can't remember how long, but it was, it was quite a while. I think it was over a hundred days, something like that. So yeah, the first initial conversation, it was day 82. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the process for this property to close, it actually took quite some time. So, I mean, that day 182 is going to be relevant later on in this that we'll mm -hmm. come back to um, when it comes down to breaking down the HUD. Um, so, yeah, it, it took some time and some relevance to, like, figure out what we we're at and what we need to do to get this done. Um, you know, getting their arrears squared away, understanding exactly what they're at, their PITI what's going to happen if they don't sell basically setting the foundation for like, what have you guys tried already? Well, it sounds like this is going to go to foreclosure if we don't move on this. Okay. Well, let's see what we could do. And then just setting that upfront and expectation, you know, uh, with the agent, letting them know like, Hey, we may be the buyer on this, but we may not be, I can never say never, but it does seem like this is going to be a tough one just because the entry fee was going to be a little bit of high and yeah. the amount of work that needed to be done super cool with that you know it really it, it it just speaks volumes when you're transparent especially when you're building a relationship with an agent um yeah you know, i'm not even sure that i really understood how much of a relationship you had with this agent beforehand but i think that just solidifies the fact of uh how much easier it was to work with this agent and then i'm sure that he's going to be bringing any more deals in the future um just because we were able to you know and i feel like in his way it was like an unsellable Right. Like yeah. oh, this is just yeah. a waste of time. Like this isn't happening, but we were able to get it done and mm -hmm. being able to find somebody and he learned something new. So, so yeah, there was a, there was a lot to it. Um, but yeah, the, just a discovery call, gather information, put it together, then send it over to underwriting. Um, so once we send it to underwriting, we look at, we really break it down and so, you know, like, Hey, what's the rent rates here? What is our exit strategy on this? How does this look? Like what are the what are the numbers gonna look like for this? And then it was it was a tough one. Like no no <laughs> no if ands or buts. This was a this was gonna be a tough one. So going back to the agent again after you know underwriting it, it, it just comes back to resolidifying. Hey, like again, I never say never, but it, I don't know if we're actually gonna be the right fit for this. What, what I think we should do here is more of like an option contract on this, where like I can still you can still have it listed and see if you find a traditional buyer. But what we're going to do is have be able to market this out to other investor friends of ours for our relationships and our contacts from doing this for so long yeah. and, and see like they have a different buy box than us. Maybe they just wanted to park some cash and they can come in and fix it up and they're just going to do something with it. So that's what we did. They were open to it. And that's like how we were able to make this happen because they weren't going to find a traditional buyer. And I think the agent knew that, but it was less stress for them as far as like hey we can still try to find somebody on the side and all that kind of stuff too so yeah and just to add to that when i when i talk about option contracts i always pitch it i say hey think of me as an, as an extension of you i'm gonna go out here and work for you for free and i'll only get paid if we can close this thing if we can't close it you know i i didn't bring any value so why would i get paid right just like an agent you're almost an agent to the agent but the agent doesn't know creative finance. And so you're actually putting the paperwork, the structure together and being able to find an educated buyer on it or find a buyer who knows how to, how to handle that, that, that deal. 
And so I, I think they're great. And I love the transparency we have one right now too in, in San Antonio, that's uh, an option contract. We actually just write in the normal contract and we put um, a clause in there saying that if they find another buyer and can give us a receipt of the MD, we'll, you know, they have the right um, unilateral right to cancel with us. So, you know, they don't feel like they're being trapped into a contract but it also gives us that paper to be able to go out and actually get done whatever we need to do. Cause otherwise if we don't have the paper, we can, you know, it doesn't really make sense to go out there and dispo a imaginary contract. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Um, now does it go, is it still say active on the market or does it go like pending or under contract or something? Would yeah. If you put an agent, I tell them, Hey, just keep it active. Like if you, if you end up having somebody solid, that can fulfill and solve the seller's problem and they can put in EMD once that EMD goes hard, right? Like once I know you have somebody serious, like we will, mm. we'll back off. But if, but if it, there's no EMD, if it's just, you know, I'll have somebody interested. No, I, yeah. I still have you tied in here. Like, cause I still want to be able to use the contract. I still want to be able to sell that contract. I still want to be able to have my side of leverage to be able to help out the seller without right. them sweeping the rug on me. Imagine if they can just sweep the rug on me once we're on a contract with an end buyer because they find a better deal. That right. was the end buyer. That was, that was just make too much of a mess. So it's it's like um, it's a window of time or it's a race of, for the agent and us to find a buyer. The good thing is if we find a buyer, we get paid and so is the agent. If they find a buyer, it's only the agent gets paid. So right. I mean, agents that understand this and know what our intentions are and we're transparent are more than often just like, Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. All right, all right, all right. When are you going to get to the numbers already? Jeez. Say 225 to keep it easy. So 225. Yeah, 225. Let's go. This price, 225K, right? And as I, as I start writing these numbers, it's going to make sense why this doesn't work. That's cash. <laughs> Loan balance. 191,000. Yep. Looks like a little bit of equity. Our rears above and beyond the loan balance. <laughs> we have 22,000. And then, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, plus 7,000 that we misestimated or if the seller told us the wrong number we find in during escrow by the way escrow is where all the fires happen um which is why it's, uh, it's i would say with a creative deal you have to have a have to have a tc because there's a lot of moving parts in these deals yeah and that you want somebody there, there for support and for clarity during all those things that happen especially if you're still talking to sellers running you know other parts of the team so on and so forth so we ended up finding another 7K. So the total arrears was 29K, which makes the total, um, I'm going to put L and E, liens and encumbrances in the property. So what total that we need to pay off, it's 220,000. Wow. I'm just going to put on here, pay off amount. So if a property is listed for 225 and there's 20, 220 that needs to be paid off, mm. there's an agent on it charging a commission of about 10 grand. Forget closing costs and all that. How much would a seller have to cut a check for? I'm making you do my Monte. <laughs> I got to pull up the calculator here. Give me a second. Where I might whoever's listening to this, I want you to do it in your head as well because it's going to make it. I, I, oh. I want people to start thinking of why low equity deals. Oh, we're at 22K. So we're at 225 list, 220 owed. And let's say the agent's commission is 10K. And then closing costs, let's say another 5K. It's just, so it's 15K total. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. How much would the seller have to, would have to come out of pocket? Two twenty five list price minus the fifteen minus the fifteen 
equals 215. Yeah. Oh, sorry, 210. Look at me. And if they owe 220, they would have to come out of pocket with 10,000 bucks. Can you imagine selling your house, your asset, right? And then seeing your bank account go down 10 grand. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you might as well keep it. It's crazy. And so that's where subject two becomes a huge, powerful tool. So sellers don't have to do this, right? So what we ended up doing in this deal, and I'll, I'll, I'll break it down simple. We ended up actually paying off this amount right here. We paid off the arrears and we took this loan subject to. What that means is the loan stays in place. The loan stays in the seller's name and we just take over the payments and the responsibility for the loan. But wait, the loan stays in her name. How are you responsible for it? Simply because we are. If you want to do right by a seller, you got to be responsible for those payments. You're acquiring a three. What was the loan on this? Four point something? But uh, let me pull it back up here. <laughs> well, you do that. I mean, and also you, you're responsible because if you don't pay, make those payments, you will too lose the house. 4.37. Interest. interest. Hey Monte, where can you find a 4.37% loan nowadays? Uh, if we go back in time. If you go back in time or if you learn subject two. Or learn subject two. Or if you learn subject two. Otherwise, <laughs> you're going to be paying 7% plus. Oh, absolutely. Right. And so for this deal, we had to take over those payments. We had to pay off these arrears. And quite frankly, the deal for us didn't quite make sense. I don't recall what the... <laughs> with the PITI was and the rent rates, but to keep it simple right now, we just didn't see it as a good fit. So we did exactly what Sean said. We were transparent with the agent. We said, Hey, Mr. Agent, we are not going to be the right <laughs> buyers for this one. 1800 PITI. 1800 PITI. Let's put it down here. Somebody's going to ask later, Hey guys, you didn't put the PITI. Do you know what you're doing? <laughs> well, I guess it, if you want to underwrite rental rates and so you need it. The VA loan while we're at it. Let's go. So it's a VA loan. Beautiful. And what's the rent rates? Rent rates, uh, 1900 to 2100. Market rents. So we're going to say about 2000. We'll keep it easy. Keep it easy. Keep it easy. So not a great rental. 2000 minus 1800 is only 200 gross without counting expenses. So it doesn't make for a great yeah. rental. Yeah. All right. But we'll talk about exit strategies a little bit later. I want to just focus on entry. So this deal was fun though. Let's talk about the highlights of this deal and how we made it happen. Right. This was a problem right here. <laughs> this is a problem right here. 22 and, and can you guys see my mouse when I'm, yeah. Okay, great. So this 22 was an issue because it, it was great at first. It was 22 in arrears. We had checked in. We had figured out a $10,000 assignment. The agent was going to get paid initially 10, and we had to renegotiate with the agent. But the agent was happy to get 5K. And then we found the 7K right here. But where does that come from? We were already given, oh, by the way, down payment to seller. Cash to seller was a thousand bucks. We're basically buying this house for a thousand dollars, and we still couldn't make it a deal for right. certain reasons. Right. For us, we did find a buyer. There's always the right buyer. So, with that said, we have to do some adjustments. And you know, Sean, you were the orchestrator of this entire deal. You handled basically acquisition, disposition, TT management. So now that we have all the numbers laid out, I'm going to let you take the mic and talk a little bit about what happened in this deal, kind of some of the things that went on and how we ended up making it work at the end. Um, yeah, so I, I can't remember how long after we locked up the deal, but the that the agent had brought like a, 
a homestead buyer. Um, yeah, the the rent rates were not great for like someone for an investor. Yeah. But the school district and being close to a good school for his kids, it was prime for that. So like it was a really family oriented neighborhood. So it was a great neighborhood. And that's why this particular buyer wanted it. Right. So he wasn't looking for it for anything other than the neighborhood and the school zone for his for his family. So it really was one of those things where it was like almost a perfect storm and finding the right buyer, but um, it, it, it worked out well. So he was a little bit savvy. He had some friends that had done some flips and kind of knew what's going on. And one that had also done a sub two before. So mm. he, when, when talking with the agent, the agent let him know, Hey, we're also looking at a creative option. Let me get you guys in contact. And so that's when we did it. There was a little hiccup in the beginning where the agent had uh, given our exact numbers in there. So the buyer was thinking that it was going to be a lower entry fee, but, you know, to use our contracts and everything for us to get this done, you needed to come up a little bit. So we, we worked with them. Um, but yeah, you know, as time went on, um, one of the things that <clears throat> it, it, it did take a while for the, for the sell or for the buyer to jump on board and really get things going. He had a lot of questions. He needed a lot of handholding. We actually recommended a TC and she was an absolute rock star. Um, Shree was amazing. So we'll give a little shout out to her uh, later on, but she really did a lot of the heavy lifting um, as far as working with the title company to make, make this transaction go smoothly. Um, and then just handholding uh, with, with the buyer um all the way through um and it was, it was skeptical about using it and i was like hey this is your first time we want to make sure that everything goes smoothly i can't recommend this enough right so we brought in the tc who got everything going so i mean that was more money out of his pocket up front but to get an interest rate in the four percent range is something that he was really attracted to because he can handle those monthly payments and he can handle the arrears along with some of the work that needed to be done he just really wanted to get in there but he wouldn't work for a traditional way with the higher interest rates being in the sevens or eights at the time right uh, <clears throat> so you know it just this one really worked out for him um and again it comes back to how the timeline right so we mentioned earlier day 82 or whatever is when you first reach out to him to the agent yeah. to get this deal locked up we kind of went through some struggles um I'd say one of the biggest learning points, I think for, for me personally, I think, I think we all learned a little bit was, you know, adjusting those numbers on the contract ahead of schedule, because sometimes with these options, they can take a while to close. And so that extra seven K or roughly, you know, we were kind of estimating around what the actual numbers were on this anyways, just for anybody that's, that's following along. Um, that's where those came from. So it was like right before another payment was due and then another payment became due. And then by the time we were going to close, we had another one. So it was like that, that, you know, close to yeah. seven grade came up pretty quick. And that's where it was like a surprise. We are all sure, but we want to get this deal done. What do we do? Yeah. Uh, so that's when it was like, Hey guys, let's, let's cut our commission. Let's cut our assignment down. So I know we each took a, you know, a couple grand off of what we were going to do. And then we had the agent do another one um, to get us to the finish line. So it really was a team effort. I know the agent really wanted to get this, um, get this one done for them because it was kind of a Hail Mary at this point. Mm -hmm. He knew it wasn't going to happen. They were way over uh, the Zestimate for like what the price point was. They weren't going to get it. And the sellers could not come out of pocket to pay. They were going to let this go to foreclosure. They, That's why they had arrears in the first place. Yeah. So, you know, that extra, whatever, six, seven grand that, that, that came up to, like when we got our preliminary HUD, we're like, holy crap, seller still needs to come to the table with 6,000 something. Yeah. Like, we're like, okay, so how do we do this? And then that's when we just decided to divide and conquer and I had that conversation with the agent um, to kind of get this done. And this was, I think this took three weeks after our actual close of escrow date. I think it was something along, it was like two, three weeks. Wow. Uh, 
before it actually closed and we needed it to close on the 31st because if it went through the first then that would change it again and be more right. closed and we're like this just what do we got to do to get this done the buyer was out of town and was like hey can we do this on the fourth and the tc just jumped right in and said absolutely not if you want this <laughs> we need to do this right now I will send somebody to you. We'll get a mobile notary or whatever we need to do to get this deal done and yeah. made it happen. So again, the value of having a TC on these sub two deals and and being able to do this is well it, worth it. It's so worth it, yeah. dude. It's so worth it. Where was the buyer at that they had to get the mobile notary? I don't remember where he went. He, I don't think he actually disclosed where he was. Um, okay. He didn't let me know he was going to town, but I mean, fun fact, like I had also left the country and it was supposed yeah. to close while I was gone and I didn't have like really good reception or service. So like, as soon as I landed back in the States, I look at my phone and I was like, holy crap <laughs> at the airport. Like, <laughs> all right, well, I'm back. Like, where, where are we yeah. at with this? What do we need to get done? And like, okay, cool. Let me talk to so-and-so. And then I just, you know, reached out to the TC, to the buyer, to the agent see where yeah. we're at on this one okay this is what we need to do we need to move quickly so let's yeah. let's get it done and really just you know i felt that there was a point where it was like is this gonna happen i know that the yeah. buyer had this mentality the sellers had that mentality but i was like it's gonna happen we just need to work together on this right and we can get it done and that was the main thing talking with the agent too and he was all about it i was like this is our preliminary HUD. This is what we're missing. Here's our deductions. You know, let's let's get it to the finish line. There was a lot of fires on this one. I mean, we had the seven thousand, which was, you know, we had to cover that out of multiple places. I made a little drawing here. I'll talk about it in a minute. And then we had the, um, the title company, the attorney, which I won't mention. I nothing against them, but they are very um, very slow, <laughs> very very slow. Oh. Uh, yeah, I forgot how slow they were. Very slow. And I think that also contributed oh. to, you know, how the time frame in this deal. Yeah. And that's one thing that, again, two two lessons here, right? One of them is use a TC every single time. It sounds like I have, I'm doing like an ad for TCs, even though it's just, <laughs> that is, they're angels in my book. Yeah. And then, you know, we met this attorney through a, a conversation that Sean had actually monted with a different one of your leads yeah great guy and he understood subject two. he understood that but his closers his team did not and so they weren't too um educated on how to prepare that hut so luckily our tc was able to help them but um obviously that took a lot of slowing down because i i think a lot of times they were just weren't really moving probably because they could they were consulting with the main attorney and trying to figure things out and i mean just learning the process so that was also a wrench. And so over time, what happened with that 7,000 kind of built up to what it was. And here's where it's just really important to, you know, appreciate a slice of, of a pie rather than having the whole thing. Many times I'd rather have, you know, what do you rather have a slice or do you rather have that? I'll, I'll take a slice all day. And so everybody kind of had to work together here and actually put a little bit away from what they were going to gain. You guys can see this bottom right side of my screen where I, where I wrote agent. Monte, you guys see that? Yeah. Uh -huh. So we ended up deducting our assignments where Monte ended up only getting 3,000. We ended up only getting 3,000, right? So right there we have four. Then the seller went from taking $1,000 to taking zero. So they gave up 1,000, so now we have five. And then the agent, it wasn't exactly 2,000, I'm running the numbers here, but they also gave up about 2,000. And that equals seven thousand dollars. We all pitched in to pay this off. So in a way, we kind of paid from our gains to save the seller for from uh, foreclosure. So I mean, being a seller now, if I was this seller, I'd be so glad. I didn't lose my house. I didn't keep the house, but I was able to not have to pay out of pocket. Mm -hmm. I have somebody paying my loan now. What does that mean for the seller? A seller would. 29 you're building arrears, the credit. you're building the credit. Exactly. Right. And now the buyer gets to lock in a 4.3% interest rate and, you know, undercut the entire market. Now the agent got paid, 
right? The agent got paid um, two grand. Monte, you took home three grand. You know, we took three grand for the team. The TC, we, you know, their their fee was like a thousand bucks. Dude, I would have paid five times that for this one. The title company got paid. So, so many people got paid on a deal, right, to make things happen. And somebody got saved out of foreclosure. Like, literally, this is why we do this. Is it to make three thousand bucks? No, not really. It's to be able to do things like this and also help sellers out. Like, we're currently doing another deal that we just locked up a two point seven interest. Yeah, dude, it's dope. <laughs> on somebody who who um who needs to sell, has they have tenants, they can't sell on the market. People are only offering cash. I mean, they could sell on the market, but you know, with tenants is tough. So they were like, mm-hmm. for our offer, we're we're putting a good amount on this one. We're putting like twenty seven grand into their pocket, into their pocket, and then taking the two point seven percent interest. I'm happy. They're happy, and so this stuff is great because if. If this can solve the problem, it's I think it's way better than cash. However, there are deals that cash can definitely just be better. It just depends on the situation. So um, asking questions is extremely important, right? It might be annoying. You might be probing. But if you understand what the seller needs, you can actually provide it or mm-hmm. find somebody who can provide it. Like um, how did you – did the buyer pay the TC fee? They did nice they did yeah we put it on and off to the buyer as a closing cost gotcha they got out cheap put it that way on this one (laughs) dude i had no idea that this was it was so much like little fires in the background because i'm just like hey i don't know that you guys didn't tell me anything (laughs) i didn't need to do anything and then i didn't even know you were out of town sean until you were like hey i'm back i'm like oh I didn't know you were out, but I'm glad you made it back safely, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what the JV partnership is, right? You know, you bring yeah. a lead and then we are able to bring it to the closing table. Like that's the goal for all of them. So Absolutely. So how would uh, people that will watch this in the future, how would they get a hold of you guys? Because I know you said you have systems in place that people can apply for their leads and stuff like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, if, you, if you're if you up to, I can give you a link where they can send you some JV forms, uh, JV deals. But uh, as far as reaching out to me directly, my Instagram is at Luciano, L-U-C-I-A-N-O dot S-V-E-T dot Svet. Here, actually, I have the writing pad. So I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and uh, make it much easier for everybody. So L... There we go. I got the power. There you go, man. He's got the power. That's the exact song that popped in my head, too. There we go. <laughs> exactly what I said. This. So that's it on IG. Yeah. Reach me. Write- it's on my link tree, too. The JV form link is okay. also on my link tree. And uh, I'm going to be adding a few more things to that here in the next couple weeks or so. So some yeah. nuggets, hopefully a cool underwriting calculator and some other things that I want to share with people. Okay. Now you got to write Sean's on that, too. Oh, mine's easy. Oh man, Sean says, you know, everybody's we're, looking for me. Everybody's <laughs> looking for Sean. And in this deal, we found Sean. Yeah. So Sean <laughs> is the right. You probably already guessed it if, you, if you're thinking. Buyer. <laughs> Can you believe that was not taken? The right buyer? I, I could not believe that. Just I waiting for the right buyer. Well, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> right here. Yeah. Yeah. Follow your boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, how yeah. I think Sean got that. So quick backstory, a little, a little uh, <laughs> off track. When I first brought Sean onto the team, I had Podium. I had this crappy dialer, and I just gave Sean a, a fat list of listings. Okay. They were in low equity. There's just high days on market. And I was like, dude, just go call all these. Pitch them cash, give them a little like algorithm. If they're not cash, it's safe. They're open to creative. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know if this is where he got it from, but I, I have, I have a theory. <laughs> Every agent, oh, have you guys got any offers? We're just waiting for the right buyer. Over <laughs> and over and over and over. And then Sean is like, comes to me a few weeks later after he started the team. He's like, dude, I made an Instagram. It's called the right buyer. Oh my. And I was like, oh my god, that is genius. 
And yeah. Sure, sure enough, the right buyer was born. Wow. That's amazing. That is not taken. Yeah. But now so it's I got taken. that for, for Instagram and also for YouTube too. So. Okay. Oh, you got a but, YouTube channel. Well, I've got the rights to it. I, you know, we're just kind of getting things going here. And I, obviously okay. we're, you're just kind of getting started. I need to get on it. You know, I think everybody's been kind of talking about being more active in social media and kind of showing yeah. what's going on. Cause there's so many things that are going on behind the scenes that we're doing on a consistent day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just prioritizing the time to get out there on social media, I, I think is, is the next step. Right. And I think we've all kind of talked about that amongst ourselves and trying to get out there and do stuff. So, um, that'll be the big, the big change. Um, you know, I think that's where a lot of people see a lot of exponential growth, right? Yeah. We're already doing some really cool things and, and I love getting out there and talking to people about it, but if I could cast a bigger net, just as, as you guys are right now, um, I think that's the goal for everybody. All right, guys, that is it for us today. You can see how this type of transaction is a win, win, win in all scenarios. The sellers just have to be open to it as well as the agents. But then it is my job to pitch it perfectly for them to understand it, for them to also explain it well enough to the sellers as well. But as you can see, everyone wins in this situation. And we also saved the seller from potentially going into foreclosure. We also helped the buyer by not having to go through a bank to get qualified to buy that type of house. And he wanted to live there because of the neighborhood. So I'm glad that everybody had a win-win-win scenario. And if you guys have any deals, I'm sure Luciano and Sean will be happy to help you guys. I'll link their tags or their IGs and their website down in the description below. So that way he can help you close some deals as well. But for me, guys, if you like, subscribe, all the YouTube things to let YouTube know you like these type of videos from me. And that way I can provide you with more of these type of videos. Well, what I've never realized is that I have the... Uh, actually, I gotta give more credit to Sean. Sean did more work than I did. It's gonna sound so bad, but I took your sub to virginity. <laughs> Sean did a lot more work. I'll just say that. <laughs>